Okay, fam, we're about to get into this. This is Tasha on Mama Bear Homesteading. We are going to get into um, pr a pretty serious topic. You know, a question I keep getting on my other channel, which is Mama Bear Prepping, is, you know, when are things going to happen? What else can we do to prepare? And really, my end game is prepare as much as possible, but you should be moving towards homesteading, right? And I want to talk about you know, what homesteading really means to me. Because to me, I think that it has, there's different notions or fantasies or romantic notions of what people expect when they say they want to homestead. Um, you have folks who say they just want to live off the grid. They want to just live with no people and just be alone and just live off the land, right? And to me, that versus homesteading versus, you know, somebody who preps, to me, to, it's all the same. It all meshes together. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't think that there's anything that's that's different, really, between the three. Yes, you have people who prep and just stack things, and that's all. Um, but s inside of them, I think that there is this desire to uh, own your own land, own your own things, because most people that are preparing, they're preparing for something, right? And a lot of that has to do with one day certain things not being available to us, right? And so for me, it's two things, right? Homesteading overall, whether you say you want to live off grid, live off the land, um, live with no power, um, be away from the government, homestead, farm, whatever you call it, um, to me, it means two things. Uh, it means self-sustainability, right? Um, being able to provide for yourself, do things for yourself. And then it means, to me, it means, um, you know, building generational wealth, right? We are building something that is for family, for the future. It's not just for today, it's for tomorrow and the farther tomorrow and the farther tomorrow, right? So hopefully generations of our people can learn how to get back to doing these things, know how to do things with their hands, with hard work, um, and build something where they are not so dependent on other people and, and whether that's a government or whatever, right? They can provide for themselves, meaning they are in complete control of their um, their de their destiny, really, right? They're not dependent on other people. Their survivability depends on them and their family, okay? Um, so I just want to walk through, you know, I guess you could say these are aspects of a homestead, but to me, um, it's just things that I think most people who say they want to homestead or live off grid think about and want to employ on whatever land they have, whether you have 200 acres, 20 acres, or you have like us, baby, half an acre, not even half an acre. It's, it's like 0.48. Okay plenty of space okay and i would venture and i would challenge somebody who says well you can't produce enough food on the land for your family on that type of land what i would say is stop listening to people tell you you can't do something okay because traditionally if i was only using flat land there possibly right but i think that if we're smart you grow up right the sky is the limit, literally, okay? Um, so many things can be grown vertically. So many things space-wise can be made by going up, okay? And so I would challenge you to not listen to people who say you can't do it in a backyard. You can't do it on less than an acre. You can't, you, it's impossible to grow that much food for a family of four or however many years in your family. Does it get more difficult the more kids and family that you have absolutely however to me that's a positive because that's more hands that can help um grow that bad boy up okay um and utilizing space that people over the years just haven't done to me we have the skills and the knowledge to take what we used to do way back when and kill the game we literally have the skills and the tools that that would be necessary to kill the game when it came to old school old-fashioned doing things with your hands growing your own food doing your thing okay and so for me that self-sustainability um and building that generational wealth and it becomes what can you produce okay and you produce it on whatever you have baby whatever you have okay because that includes your inside your outside your land going up um your sheds uh, there's the 
the possibilities of where to grow is is endless. You know, the things that I think are the most important when it comes, not maybe most important, but when it comes to what somebody thinks about self-sufficiency, producing your own stuff, producing your own food, producing your own water, um, or procuring your own water, right? And being able to do that, producing your own power possibly. Now, some people don't want that and that's fine. They want to live off the land. Um, they don't, on purpose, they do not want to have power, even the kind they generate. That's cool, right? So whatever you're, that's why I say homesteading looks different because some people don't want to do that. They want to go back, okay? And live a more simple life, okay? So, but if you did want power, the point is getting to the point where you're generating your own power, okay? And there's a ton of ways to do that. Um, I think raising animals is a huge piece of, of most people who want to live off of the grid or live on their own like that. They know the importance of having animals that can produce products, can produce food, right? Whether that's chickens and eggs, other birds that lay eggs, whether that's pigs, goats, and, and there's there's other aspects they want, other meat animals, rabbits, bigger stuff, right? That's why I say homesteading, farming, all that stuff, because really it just depends on the size of your location and what you can do, right? I know that on a half an acre, I absolutely can have small birds. I absolutely can have chickens. I absolutely can have rabbits. Um, goats, maybe not so much, right? Only because it takes a lot of, um, I don't need a huge space, but I do need really sturdy, high fencing. Um, and I just, I just don't know, right? Um, same thing, pigs, whatever. It just really comes down to ethically, you know, do you feel like you have enough space to give them more space? But half acre, let me tell you, we have a lot of space here. Okay. We have probably a third of it is like driveway area that's not being utilized and has never been utilized for absolutely nothing. Okay. It is huge. And there's huge pieces of that that could be used without really taking away from a driveway and getting back and forth to the garage, the detached garage. So again, what can you dream up here? Okay. Don't listen and just say, well, I have to do it this way because people told me I have to do it this way. Right. Um, do it the way that you dreamed it could be done. Do it the way you research some unique ways that things can be done. Okay. Everything is at the touch of our fingers for now. And so use that to find and outsource and learn different ways to do things. Things don't have to be done the way they always did. Remember, so much room to kill the game. Okay. Other thing, um, I talked about other animal pens, composting, an area for composting, an area for making your own fertilizer. Um, I had a lot of people talking about making their own fertilizer and how to do that. Um, composting, having a big area for composting, different bins to be able to move stuff back and forth. Um, I think it's important. It doesn't take a whole lot of space, um, but it's kind of a must. You need that for your continuous seasons of growing, okay, to help. Um, greenhouse, right? This goes into growing again. Obviously you grow, I just said, growing outdoors, growing in pots, growing up, uh, growing in greenhouses so that you're able to grow some things that maybe aren't the norm, right? Aren't the typical things that you would grow or that people would grow in this area, but I'm going to push the envelope myself. Okay. I'm going to get a greenhouse and I'm going to have all types of tropical stuff in there. And I'm going to see how warm I can keep stuff and how alive I can keep stuff. And, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to prove people wrong that you can do this stuff. A lot of stuff you could keep in your house. Okay. So that it stays warmer. There is a lot of stuff that you can do. And, you know, people would be like, well, ideally you want to keep that in the house or you want to do that. Um, do you, you know, depending on how big your house is or whatever, you know, lemon trees don't get that big before they start producing lemons for you. Okay. Think about what you're doing and what you can do research and get on it, right? Dream away and, and make that self-sufficient, you know, t um, beautiful dream come true, whatever that is. Okay. Um, you know, your own septic, thinking about getting off the grid now, right? In the sense of not on city septic, not on city, any kind of city water, any kind of city power, any of those things, right? So having the ability that yes, you can do those things in your house, possibly if it's grid down, like long-term, 
your property, you have spaces to take showers, to brush your teeth, to wash your dishes, to do laundry, right? You have that set up because this is like your compound. And so you have this little mini homestead that is, you have the ability to do that stuff indoors or you set it up to do it indoors off grid, but you also have some backups for outside. Um, I think it's just, you know, this is just, you're, you're building this, 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 um, you know, this food forest, this beautiful piece of property to be your dream, no matter how big it is. And um, how do you do that without, again, depending on other entities? So, you know, for us, obviously, we're on the grid right now. We aren't on septic, but we are on the grid in regards to power and water. But 100%, the goal is to be self-sufficient, to, to have our own power, to produce our own power, to produce our own um, water um, and how to procure water, right? We stack it, know how to procure it, what is around us, how we're going to get there, how we're going to get the water, all of that good stuff. Um, how to catch it, obviously, we live somewhere that where it rains a lot. How to catch it, maintain it, make sure we have enough water to take us through the, the hot um, um, summer months. I think that is the, the, the idea and the trick here in places like the Pacific Northwest that rains so much, you know, oh, it's easy to catch rain, but then those people don't catch enough or do enough to have water through, let's say in a grid down situation, how they would get water through the summer, through the hot, hot summers that we have. Okay. Um, so that is, it's more than like for here, it's more than just catching water. It's how do you catch and procure and get water to carry you, um, to be self-sufficient and have that water through an entire very hot summer. Okay. Equipment, super important. I think any kind of tools, off-grid tools is, are important. Um, but again, I think equipment, bigger equipment is important, right? Rototillers, big stuff, bobcats, um, back hoes, that type of stuff, super important for a homestead. You can get one of those bobcats with different attachments to do several different things in your, um, and they're smaller. So to us, that's ideal because we don't have a lot of space, right? And so we, in a lot of land, right? But we would need something to be able to do smaller projects, dig a hole, do this, do that, right? And so um, thinking about equipment and how that fits into the big scheme of things. But remember, um, with equipment that takes gas, right? And so you have to have a way to produce your own gas for that later. And so that you could continue to do that well after the gas, you know, goes away. Um, and there's ways to do that, right? Um, or, you know, you just don't use that stuff and you go to handheld stuff. Okay. Um, but equipment, super, super important. Um, next thing is generating income, right? Part of being self-sufficient is, okay, you have your land, you have all your stuff, but you can still pay your bills. Let's say you're paid off. You don't have any bills. You still have taxes. Um, you still have to be able to make some kind of income, produce some kind of product that either you can use for bartering or you could sell for cash if there's still a dollar. But if there's no dollar, you know, it has to be significant stuff that can be able to be traded um, in whatever kind of you know, world we're living in, right? What type of income can you produce? If you can produce it now while there's a, a an economy and you can get cash and you can earn money that way and you're doing that now, that's awesome. Um, but if you're not, think about the future and think about doing that as soon as possible, um, you know, because you don't know how long that will last. And then later it becomes some sort of bartering, right? Think that through what people would want. Um, even growing things in your garden that maybe you don't eat, but you have the space to grow a little something that you can preserve, put in jars that you know other people definitely eat, um, that you can barter later, okay? So think about income. Maybe you have a ton of chickens, right? Those eggs. Think about that stuff, right? Other stuff I think about, you know, because I mold it. It's like I'm building this compound. I'm building this little mini world that's ours. Um, generational wealth, preparedness, all with homesteading and living off grid um, is being able to do things for myself. So a medical clinic to me, don't get all like medical clinic. That sounds like a big building. And some, no, I'm just talking about a, a simple room that is set up for medical stuff. You've got a little table in there. You've got a, um, some sort of table that they can lay on, um, somewhere where you can, you know, pull blood, give blood, stitch somebody up. Um, just, you you have your uh, medicine maybe housed there and locked up, um, whatever the case may be. This is kind of where you take care of all the boo-boos, cuts, 
all of that stuff, okay? Somebody's very, very sick, ill. Maybe this is where you keep all your tinctures and your different salves and different things that you've made. This may be where you're drying your herbs. Um, just find a space or be thinking in the future on your land, on your property, in your house, wherever, in the garage, a space that's dedicated to some sort of medical pharmacy clinic, a space that is dedicated to medical stuff, right? That you can keep halfway sterile, that type of thing, okay? I'm thinking long-term how you build this for yourself. I'm thinking housing. I'm thinking when family comes or if I happen, we happen to take in some people, where do those people sleep, right? You might not have no extra bedrooms, baby, in your house for other people, right? Um, is there a spot on your, on your property where you can build up some tiny homes? Um, is there maybe somebody comes and has some um, type of RVs or trailers? Where would you put those? Is there space for that? Um, is there space in your garage to do a corner where you can build up like four bunk beds? And it's just a tiny little space for four bunk beds for four people to sleep. Do you have extra cots? Maybe it's just you just invested in the cots and you have the cots and people can sleep under the stars or in the garage or whatever, right? Um, maybe it's tents, right? But again, where do you plan to put this stuff? Where do you plan to set this stuff up if you do take in people to help or family members or people that were planning to come to you? This is big. I think about this on a small scale. On our backyard, I've thought this through. I know exactly where people are going, what, where we can put tents, where we can put this, where we have cots, I all of that. Okay, So this can be done on a small scale. If you have land, even better, right? I mean, you can build old school um shelters if you have land and trees and cover and different materials all types of stuff that can be done but you got to think it through so that you can get the things you need now to get that going whether it's printing off um prints right um if whether it's getting the tools the nails the wood whatever it is the tent you want to buy the cots you want to buy but i just think this through i think this through too because you know even people that are like we're not bringing, we're, we would never open our doors to anybody, right? Um, you know, I, I would say you just, you just don't know. You, you really just don't know what you will do until you're in that moment. Um, it, it, you know, family member comes and times are rough and you're emotional, way more emotional than you, you know, we've never gone through this. So you really don't know, right? Um, you say all day long, oh, I would never take in a family, right? And then that family comes and in your gut and God tells you it's safe, do it, do it. I, I'm probably going to do it. If I hear God tell me to do it, I'm probably going to do it. And I haven't, if I haven't thought that through, you know, can we still make it work? Absolutely. Can you know, because at the end of the day, people, people um, slept on the ground all over the place, right? All over this country, all over this world. There's people live on the ground still in this, in this world. So you know, it can, can it be done? Absolutely. Okay. Other thing is storage, you know, having the space, making sure you have a space for extra tools, extra maintenance tools, preparedness items. Um, yes, if you have a garage, that's great. But again, you're building this little mini compound. You're going to need space for wood, for projects, extra space for maybe, um, stuff you canned, food, um, other stuff you, you know, preparedness items. Um, actual firewood there's just tons of stuff that you may will need to have on your property but have in something right so you can secure it so you can fortify it um so you can keep it safe right out of the elements of the weather or whatever the case may be um so think storage through think storage through like okay maybe i have something but i it would be beneficial if we got a 20 foot container and we got that and we had that for extra storage to to hold the the animal feed or whatever it is okay think it through future big picture the things that ideally you would want to have right maybe i want a container just for garden stuff extra fertilizer extra um dirt uh special things back up this back up that all the whatever okay um just th think that through right um you know, a lot of people be like, well, I have a big barn. Yeah, if you have some property and you have a huge barn and you know that you'll never run out of space, then cool. You know what I'm saying? But if you're somebody like me working on a smaller scale, yes, we have a garage. Yes, we have some space. But thinking through, okay, future, what we might need more, um, 
more storage for, okay? Um, next, I have fortification, security, right? Um, protecting that, whether, again, you're on a small scale like me or you're on 20 acres, 200 acres, right? Totally different picture when it comes to security, right? And also watching over that fortification, you know, Many years ago, we wanted land, 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 land. That's all we wanted was land. We dreamed of land. And then we ended up here and God's like, you're staying there. And I was like, what? At first, like, how do, what? How do I do that? And now I've fallen in love with a plan that he's right. It's, it's not my plan. It's God's plan. You do what he, and move in the direction that God wants you to move. Okay. And now we're doing it and we're, and now I'm thinking back like, Man, we used to lose so much sleep thinking about how we were going to secure and fortify acres and acres of land. Like truly watch through it, be able to see everything, be able to see when people came on, see if there was marauders, see if there was people just, um, you you know, sleeping on your land, being on your land, right? Just as a place to stay. Um, how could you you know, not only that, but fortify and secure it and be able to truly protect yourself in such a big area, right? Um, and we went back and forth on flat land, stuff with cover. Just, we just really, really went to town on how you would fortify big property. And then here we are, we have this little property. And I am I feel blessed in a lot of ways because now it's very intimate um, protection, very intimate, close-knit fortification our plan for increasing fortification later when it like really 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 like really goes left i feel good about that because it's such a small it's a compound okay it's much easier to completely fortify this little piece of property like truly where people can't get in than it is you know some big piece of property it just it is what it is right and so i feel blessed that that's working out for us and there's days where I was like, you know, but it would be nice to have some acres. And I see people in their videos walking around and walking their property. And does that make me a little jealous? It does. But I'm telling you, I am I feel very, very blessed and fortunate for what I have. Okay. And then the other thing is weatherizing. You know, you have this land, you have this piece of property. How do you protect it? Yes, you have to fortify, secure it, but you also have to protect it from elements, from weather. Okay. And so preparing now to this compound, this place that's yours, um, weatherizing it, weatherizing it and getting it ready for fire threats, for, um, you know, um, flooding threats, heat, extreme heat, extreme co cold, right? And snow and what that looks like and what that does to your animals, to your property, to your garden, all of that stuff, right? And so figuring out, going through the different things that happen in your area and then preparing now for them, um, so that you're covered, your homestead is covered for um, different weather elements that could happen, okay? Um, you know, this has been our dream for so long. And, uh, you know, this was almost, this is something we dreamed about well before we really, truly started prepping, right? Prepping was the first thought back in Katrina days, right? That's where I first thought, wow, we can't depend on somebody. Learn that lesson early. Can't depend on somebody and got to get your food, um, got to get stuff prepped, right? Got to stack stuff, stack stuff, stack stuff. When I w Then I went through the years of watching Doomsday Preppers with everybody and I was like, these guys are some wackadoodles, right? And I took pieces of those shows that I that were common sense stuff that I did, that I did like, right? And I built upon that, built upon that. But truly... From that point, it, it always was long game was homesteading and what that means to us. And that has changed and developed over the years to now where we're at. And could things change? Could we, you know, sell and move somewhere someday? We could, but it's very unlikely because we are building generational wealth here. We are, we are building something here that to be honest, the grass is not always greener on the other side. Um, you know, my chances of somebody coming along, um, and thinking that I have something to take, I'm talking about the government now is lower when I don't have land. I don't have all this land. I don't have all this farmland. There's no reason for you to want my little piece of the world. Right. Um, 
yeah, they could come through. And when, when they start, like a lot of people say, you know, why would you want to do that when one day the government's going to try to come and take stuff from you, take your equipment, take your chickens, uh, say you can't raise animals, whatever, whatever it is they try to do. Um, as you move through that, I would say I'm, I'm more concerned with what I can get now and what I can get from those things now, right? It's about being self-sufficient. However long that lasts, I will ride that out. I will, I will, um, preserve, let's say chickens. I will preserve eggs till I can't preserve eggs no more. And if one day they come through and they take everybody's chickens away from the whole neighborhood, everybody, right? Um, one, there's going to be people that fight that. And then two, let's just say they get them chickens, right? You're not able to keep the chickens safe, right? And they're confiscated or whatever. Um, I still will feel blessed for the amount of time that I had with those. And I was able to preserve all that food, right? I will, I will keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Um, I don't know. I think that in the times that we're in now, it's important to have the mindset of working towards the goal of homestead. I know a lot of people are like, I can't do it. Um, I could never move. I could, do you have what we have though? Do you have a backyard? Do you have any kind of space? If you have any kind of space, you can move up. Do you have a condo with some sort of little backyard space? And you're like, there's no way. There's n Go up as much as you can. And then really, really get smart with your indoor gardening space, right? Use your walls, right? Um, I think that more people are going to be, as we go through things, are going to be shifting towards preparedness and homesteading, homesteading right? Shifting towards we can't count on the government and they're going to be shifting towards what can we do to be self-sufficient? What can we do to depend on ourselves? And you're going to have more and more people move towards that idea of freedom as they see their freedom being pulled away or or not being able to get the things that they want to get or the things they need, right? Um, the question is going to be, is it just, is it too late? Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um I'm not sure what I'll be showing next week. You know, I think that you guys probably get sick and tired of just seeing my update in my garden. Um, I do have a foraging video that I've been working on, different things that I've been fi finding in my backyard that I'm trying to do a video on because I'm surprisingly finding all types of delicious um, edible items, medicinal items in my backyard, okay, that I plan to fully take advantage of and procure. And these are things that will come back every single year, okay? And I didn't have to pay anything for them in regards to plant a seed or do anything, right? They just come back every single year, okay? So maybe I'll do um, finish up that video and bring that to you next Friday. But um, I hope you guys have a blessed week, uh, weekend. Get the things done, baby. Prepare, prepare, prepare. And keep working towards self, being self-sufficient, right? Um... That's the name of the game, baby. Uh, own your destiny, right? All right. So I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.